So if we go with uh, display. <coughs> Alright, so I only do the first two. I was working on the third one, but I've got a lot of other work going on, so... Oh, well. <coughs> Alright, so there's a reminder. Multiples of... Uh, we want the sum of all multiples of three or, f three or five below 1,000. And this is not... Um <coughs> Man, I just gave that away. <coughs> anyway. Um, the whole point behind Project Euler is to get people interested in the connections with p computer science and be able to uh, work on their skills, see if they can solve interesting and new math problems as we go further and further on. What we've got at the moment is... So like I said, find the sum of all multiples of either 3 or 5 below 1,000. So um, I'd originally done this in MATLAB, or Scilab, I guess, the free clone. And uh, it it was pretty good. I understood MATLAB and Scilab well enough that um, I could do probably, I think I told you last week, I could do like the first 20 or so um, without too much trouble. There was, there was some sitting around and thinking for a while, but... Nonetheless. <coughs> so for this one, um, basically for anything that you're going to be doing, any sort of uh, project in math, uh, you're going to want to import the math library. So import math on Python would be the first command. Uh, coming down further, we have, um, I just named this mult35 for multiples of three or five. <coughs> and we're going to set that to an initial blank. So this is uh, a null set, but it's going to be filled pretty soon. And also, once I got to the bottom, <laughs> I realized that, oh no, I need to actually sum these up. So I created a list sum uh, variable, which ended up here. That actually is not even necessary. So we'll just take that out. <coughs> Extra space. Okay. Uh, so I created a for I created a for loop, and the purpose of the for loop is to iterate over values of i, and i is going to be the index for any particular value that we want, and this is going for give me a range from basically one to a thousand. Hey, Craig. Um, you know, hanging in there. <laughs> Thought I'd do a couple minutes on uh, Project Euler, just update where I've gone with... I mean, it's only one and two, but still. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and I will get to them when I'm done with this. Uh, there it's, it's possible that I'll get to number three, possibly number four in the next week, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a little more mo motivated to do some different work uh, at <coughs> that would make sense Compi considering it is computer science it would probably include zero as well um, you know what let's let's run the program because I'm sure that would tell us <coughs> yep include zero <coughs> so we see at the beginning we have a zero here um, <clears throat> if you didn't want it to include zero, then you could either remove it after the fact or um, do it at some point in the middle. At any rate, uh, for i in the range of 1,000, so 0 to 1,000, thank you very much. <coughs> hmm. Well, it didn't yell at me, so... Uh, <clears throat> um, if now this uh, percent here is the uh, modulus operator so for anybody who doesn't know about that uh, you take the first number and you divide it by the second number and then um, you find the remainder so if the remainder of i divided by 3 is 0 you do double equals for proving something is true or false so 
if we have uh, i divided by 3 has a remainder of 0, or i divided by 5 has a remainder of 0, which is what we're going for, again, multiples of either 3 or 5. Uh, then we're going to take that number, i, and append it to the list mult 3, 5. So Python has this super intuitive way to do this. Um, I, I like it. I'm just going to have to get used to it because, I, I'm, like I've said, I've, I've been getting used to uh, MATLAB and Scilab so much that, you know, this is kind of new to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, uh, my trivia league just had a question about Python the other day. It was kind of funny. <clears throat> so, mult35.append, parentheses i, will append i onto mult35, again, if the condition above is met, so it will divide evenly by 3 or 5. <laughs> Once it's all done, I had uh, print mult35, and then um, I didn't even need to do this either. This could have just been print sum mult35, but I, I'm a creature of habit, so... I typically don't nest functions where I don't have to. Um, <coughs> and uh, yeah, it's that's just me. Anyway, so print mult35, which we get the printing of the entire list here, which helps, especially if you're wrong, to just go through and make sure, yeah, I do have the right thing showing up. And then I had uh, store the sum of mult35 into x and then print it. So print, we have here the 233,168, which was the correct answer over on the other side. <coughs> okay. Range doesn't include 1,000. That's interesting because... <coughs> okay. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, below. Ah. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yeah, below 1,000, so we're okay. <laughs> yep, no, I got you now. Yeah, I was I was wondering why I'm off by 1,000 if that were true, <laughs> and yet it accepted my answer. So yeah, that would have been 234,000 if we included the 1,000 as part of that. All right, cool. <clears throat> so number two was uh, we want the sum of the even Fibonacci numbers whose values do not exceed 4 million. <clears throat> so in order to figure out the Fibonacci sequence, again, you're going to look at... Um, well, I mean, the way we do it is you're going to take the previous values... Let me get the whiteboard up here. <coughs> If anybody watching is not completely clear on Fibonacci sequence, that was a mistake. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the Fibonacci sequence, um, typically people start 1, 1, and then from here go on up. Uh, typically when I'm indexing this and doing computer science, I will start at zero and include zero as the first one because this only requires uh, these two positions to start the iteration. Technically, if you start with one and one, it'll also do the same thing because again, you're looking for, in this case, the sum of the Fibonacci numbers. If you include zero, it doesn't matter, but um, again, creature of habit, I usually include zero and one because it's mathematically slightly more appropriate, but whatever, it's fine. So if you include 0 and 1, the sequence itself, um, actually, f, f sub n, so the nth term of the sequence f is going to be given by f sub n minus 1, the n minus 1th term in the sequence, plus f sub n minus 2, so the n minus tooth, n minus second, uh, term in the f sequence. <laughs> so as we can see here, if we uh, enumerate these f1, f2, f3, <coughs> we 
we have here F3 is equal to F2 plus F1. F2 is 1, F1 is 0, and that gets us a value of 1. So that's the next one in the sequence, and then we just iterate, just keep repeating this value. So n, our f sub 4, when n equals 4, we do the same thing. f sub 4 is equal to f sub 3 plus f sub 2. So f sub 3 we just found is 1, f sub 2 we just found is 1, and f sub, two, f sub 4 is 2. <coughs> Alright, now we can keep doing this. So 1, 1, 2 add the previous two terms, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, eight plus 5 plus 8 is 13, I'm going backwards in my head, 8 plus 13 is 21, 13 plus 21 is 34, 55, 89, and 144 are going to be the first, uh, how many is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, so the first 13 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. This is an infinitely increasing sequence. It's just going to go on forever and ever and keep increasing at a faster and faster rate as we keep going up. There are some really cool things that happen with the Fibonacci sequence, which we can talk about in a little bit, because that'd be fun. <laughs> but for now, back to the computer science. Um, <clears throat> so what I did was I said, okay, Fibonacci sequence is 0, 1 to start with, and um, F even is just going to be all of the even values of the Fibonacci sequence, which we, we start with 0, which again isn't going to affect the sum, so it doesn't matter if I just started with it at first or not. Um, Alright, so then I created a what's known as a while loop. So this constantly looks back at this particular value, and I said as long as um, the Fibonacci sequence items that are here, uh, <laughs> this is a little weird. So <laughs> what I did was I subbed in the index minus 1 and minus 2, which. <coughs> Technically, <laughs> all right, let's, <sighs> fine. <laughs> Technically, I should have included this as F0, F1, all right. I'm just going to have to erase this, because. I'm being inconsistent, that's my problem. <clears throat> All right, so if we call this f sub 0, f sub 1, f sub 2, f sub 3, f sub 4, etc. <coughs> then what we've got here is, again, this was f sub 2 is going to be f sub 1 plus f sub 0, and f sub 3 is going to be f sub 2 plus f sub 1. Okay. Re-index. <coughs> Hello. Matthew, or what? <coughs> okay, so, in the Fibonacci sequence, Matthew, just to let you know, I'm doing a little bit on the Fibonacci sequence, but we're going back to um, Project Euler, just for a little bit, and uh, descri describing how I'm doing Project Euler problem number two. Um, if you're at all interested in doing Project Euler, it is projecteuler.net, which is um, just an interesting little puzzle. It's not really a game, but it's, it's something to help hone your skills, um, both in mathematics and programming. So that is projecteuler.net. <coughs> Okay, so anyway, what I had done here was um, when you're taking a sequence in Python, you can index Well, hopefully you've come to the right place so 
<clears throat> so um, f of 4 essentially is what we're doing with um, indexing and here this is going to be this particular value it is the 0 1 2 3 fourth term and so it calls it as 3. An interesting thing happens in Python when you decide to call a negative value it goes to wherever you had your zero value and then goes backward one. <laughs> but this is really helpful actually because I was sitting there for 20 minutes trying to figure out how to go to the last term and it was like you know I, I can't I don't have any of the I don't have anything that I can call. I was trying to call something and it wasn't working so I was I looked it up eventually and was like oh that's really handy. So by picking f of minus 1, this instead wraps all the way around to the end of the sequence, wherever you just ended it. <laughs> so f5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's so like f12. If that's the last one, then it wraps all the way around, ends it, and says, okay, for this one, it's going to be 12. And then f negative 2 is going to wrap around again. Now it's going to be 2 in the opposite direction, so now we get an 89 as well. So it's really handy when I was just trying to do this, you know, offhanded, and I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> this, yeah, this particular indexing thing came in handy just because I was like, let me find the last term in the sequence. <clears throat> yeah, I, I did one of those beginner programming courses for, like, kickstarting into Python uh, basically a year ago when we started doing all of this we were doing pandemic training to say, like, how are we going to teach from home? And I'm like, <sighs> right. <clears throat> so while they were explaining some really simple stuff that I was like, I know I, I know how to set up my network, um, <laughs> I decided to start learning Python. <clears throat> Now, I will say, again, I am not sophisticated in any way, shape, or form, but <laughs> hey, why not? All right. <clears throat> so what I did was I said, uh, take those last two terms, and as long as those last two terms sum up to less than 4 million, which was the precept in the uh, Project Euler page, then uh, next term, I said, call it next term, is going to be equal to fib negative 1 plus fib negative 2. So again, it's going to go back around, and then fib append next term. Again, I probably could have done fib append and then just that fib negative 1 plus fib negative 2, but I like doing things modularly, so in case, just in case later on I want to break this up and remind myself what I'm doing, um, <coughs> I find it easier, just me personally, to like set a variable, call a function into it, or call an operation into it, and then take that uh, variable and move it. And then also if uh, next term divided by 2 is equal to the int of next term over 2. So if you're going to divide by 2 and then get the same thing as the floor function or int of uh, that same division, then it's divisible by 2. So <clears throat> any even value can be written as um, something that looks like 2k, where k is an integer. And if it's odd, then it's going to be 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. <coughs> then when you um, work on, or when you do that and try to divide by 2, I said, okay, let this be some 2k value which is our next term, and we divide it by 2, we end up getting k, which is an integer. So therefore, uh, 2k is even, which, I mean, right, it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, but then if we had oops, 2k plus 1 and divide by 2, we're going to get k plus a half. <coughs> and here, therefore, 2k plus 1 is not even, which, of course, we knew that, but, you know. 
<clears throat> uh, that int function should return true or false. It may return one or zero. I can't remember. Let's try this. Um, x equals zero. X equals one. False. Yeah. So it's. <clears throat> uh, Matthew, do check out some of my video on demand, though, because I do have um, more academic stuff in there, which is like why a whole bunch of stuff works. <clears throat> So I invented, for instance, a different method of solving um, absolute values, which involved a pseudo-graphical method, and then um, I explained like how it actually works in algebra, and how it's like supposed to be written out in algebra uh, to accompany my pseudo-graphical method. Um, there's also a bunch of other stuff on like I don't know, looking at quadratics and oh, um, graphing. So I, I also did uh, graphing a, a slightly different way, looking at function transformations. So there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, check out the check out the on-demand stuff. Uh, under highlights is going to be mostly where I keep my stuff, because um, I keep my raw I keep my raw video in the like past broadcast, but it expires after 30 days, so you. Basically, I just take a whole bunch of stuff, highlight them, and then chop them up into pieces, and throw them into the uh, bins. <coughs> anyway, I'm pretty much done with this one, so... <laughs> so I said, yeah, if it's divide by 2, you get the same thing as the floor function divide by 2, then append that particular term to the even... Come on. To the even thing and then sum up all the evens print the fibonacci sequence and then print the sum all right anyway i'll keep that around for later maybe but 